do you often wake up in the middle of the night ravenous and you need to get up and eat and uh, it's so frustrating but how do you stop so uh, i'm going to give you some tips on the nighttime eating syndrome so hi i'm vanessa mclennan and i help people to work through their eating issues so that they live a life free from food stress <laughs> So if you'd like to see more of my videos, please click on the subscribe button and click on the bell. So what is nighttime eating syndrome? In order to meet the full diagnosis of it, you need to have at least three of the following five criteria. So the first one is morning anorexia, where you don't eat up until probably about 12 o'clock or even longer. So you really have a restriction or go into starvation mode in the morning. This is not to be confused with intermittent fasting because intermittent fasting you are also eating foods but you're doing it on a regular basis and you might not intermittent fast every single day. So morning anorexia is where you would perhaps not eat more or less every single day or for a long sustained period of time. Second is evening hyperphagia where you have an increased appetite but actually in the evening. So it's been classified as eating 25% of your calories after seven or 8 p.m. and into the night. Number three is having difficulty going to sleep or staying asleep. Number four is having symptoms of anxiety, irritability, um, depression, but especially later at night in the evening. So you're going to bed feeling, you know, anguished, um, depressed, and just irritated. Number five is you have the mindset that you have to eat to be able to go to sleep, or you're waking up in the middle of the night, you've got to eat to be able to get yourself back off to sleep. Now, a lot of the time, some of my clients won't meet the full diagnosis, but they'll have, you know, some of the criteria and, but it will be over a prolonged period of time. And it doesn't mean to say that it's not uh, distressing. It certainly is. It's very distressing and very, um, you know, irritating. Again, it's sort of taking over your life that you want to put right and you want to get a grip on it. So here's how. How do we stop? I know how just emotionally draining and life taking over, if that makes sense, an eating disorder can be. You know, all your thoughts, efforts, and energies go into managing your food and managing your eating. And then, especially something like nighttime eating, where it can really then disrupt your whole pattern and disrupts your sleep. It's just so tiring and so draining that you do want to you know get a hold of it really so here's what you can do find your trigger so using the newton cradle you know analogy if you're looking at that first ball being pulled really high up into the air that's going to then whack against all those other balls and you've got lots of other behaviors small behaviors in between and then the last one the last one you're seeing your nighttime eating so what is the first ball for you and as you're looking at your life, it may not be obvious because you, you know, you're going about your life and you've got all these other little behaviours and you've got no idea what perhaps is then causing the nighttime evening. So this is where taking a journal and taking a log is really, really helpful because actually it helps you to get mindful about your behaviours. So you've got to keep a log of all of your food that you eat, um, what time you're eating it. And if you're eating it, you know, because you feel hungry or are you not eating because you want to lose weight? Uh, are you just too busy to eat? Are you eating on the go? What is it that you're eating and the times throughout the day? So we're trying to look for a pattern of are you eating enough? Are you eating regularly? Are you hungry? Are you forgetting? You know, is your eating disordered or is it you know, you, are you feeling satisfied? Also, take a journal of an emotional log. So if this could be at the end of the day, how you just generally felt, uh, stressed, anxious, uh, rushed, are you busy? Did, were you exhilarated? Were you having a high throughout the day? You're trying to pair your emotions with your food. So I want to know, you know, are you too busy and not to eat? Are you, you know, um, 
too rushed that actually you're eating sporadically what's happening for you also keep a log of upsets things that trigger you because they could be tied to your eating you've got into a habit where something is stressing you out and then you relieve that stress by going and eating your night at night time by doing this one of my clients was able to work out that she actually hated eating in front of people she felt so conscious because she was carrying extra weight and she didn't want to be challenged over what she ate and uh, you know it was just yeah very very awkward for her to eat in front of other people and so the only time then that she could eat whatever she wanted in peace in comfort was at night when no one else was looking at her so what we had to do was rather than tackle the nighttime eating we worked on her feeling comfortable then in her own skin and not to worry about everyone else around her so she could start to get comfortable eating in front of others and sure enough that was what helped the nighttime eating structure your eating during the day you may not be eating enough you may be eating sporadically it might not be regularly enough for you so structure your eating so that you're having your three main meals a day and two snacks if you want it this might be a big big jump for you in which case don't do all of that at once do it one step at a time so for instance you might not eat breakfast uh, but you might then eat a tiny bit of lunch and you might have a massive dinner so start by just having some fruit for breakfast or you know like a smoothie drink or a, a, a fruit juice drink start with something small and then build it up and it's the same for lunch start with something small or if you don't eat anything you eat sporadically just have a clock or something to remind you that actually it's it's time to eat even though i'm all for intuitive eating i think if you're eating in a disordered way you've got to get some sort of structure in place first to for your body to go oh okay this is what eating on a regular basis feels like this is good this is what i need for you to then be able to eat intuitively create a sleep routine a lot of my clients especially with nighttime eating syndrome will have a lot of disrupted sleep and also may have another issue a sleep issue besides your nighttime eating so it's creating a nice routine where your bedroom is only used for sleep in other words it's a place of relaxation so any phones laptops work activity get it out of the bedroom make it a really really comfortable you know place have a routine where you wind down at least 30 minutes before you go to sleep so again that could be coming away from the phone because the blue light can disrupt the sleep um, or it could be not doing any work and it could be just simply meditating as part of that going for an evening walk as some people do or just simply watching the tv but it's got to be a wind down I know myself if I work late into the night and then go straight to bed there's no way I'm getting to sleep because my mind is just too frazzled you know and I know that if I look at my phone the blue light it really disrupts my sleep and I'm so guilty of it <laughs> so it's really then bit by bit finding the new helpful sleep patterns to get into work on your other issues so many times that the nighttime eating syndrome comes with other issues and these could be anxiety depression um, you know white issues um, and other sleep disorders and what we try to do is work on the nighttime eating whereas actually if we worked on the other issues it could help with the nighttime eating um, it's going back to this crate this Newton's cradle analogy again the other issues could be those balls in between that's causing then the release which is the nighttime eating so are you anxious throughout the day are you feeling you know depressed and the nighttime eating is a release and that's often what the nighttime eating will serve it will serve as you know a release it will serve as a relief a way to get away from these other issues that you're feeling so work on your other issues though bit by bit you know one thought at a time because again it's just too much 
and it's not sustainable to change everything at once. And this is where talking to a therapist really, really helps you to get clear on what's going on, because sometimes it can feel like a tangled mess, to help you relieve things bit by bit so that you no longer see the nighttime eating. Get a health check. You could have some underlying condition that you may not even know that you have that is causing you to eat and especially then eat at night time. So for instance, you could have you know, um, diabetes, a liver condition, your hormone levels could be out of whack, um, and also your blood sugars could be out of whack. You know, there's an eating hormone that you know could completely be out of whack that's causing you to eat at irregular times and you're not going to know this until you get it checked so it could be a bit like a chicken and egg situation because do you have nighttime eating syndrome and maybe other syndromes because you've been eating a poor diet throughout your life so it's caused this issue or do you have other issues that you're not aware of that is causing you to have disordered eating you're not going to know until you get it checked out. So there are companies that you can do blood tests at home. Medichex is one of them. This is obviously for the UK, where you go online and you test your blood at home and you post it off. This can be really, really helpful if you don't know what to get tested for or you go to the doctors and they're not, for whatever reason, able to offer it to you. So let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. Do you have nighttime eating syndrome and what have you tried?